Hello. Recently, I went book shopping. I know, shock surprise, but this was for a special occasion where I went on my first book shop crawl with a number of different booktubers. And this event was organized by Katie Lumsden of Books and Things, uh, who's a great reader of classics and uh, who's an author herself. And so she organized a meetup for us in the east of London, where we hit a number of different bookshops. And it was just so great as a, like a social occasion and to meet all of these readers and exchange book recommendations while going to a number of different bookshops. So there were a couple of booktubers who I've met before, uh, like Sarah from Hardcover Hearts, who's all the way over from California, and Bob the Booker, who I see quite regularly. But I also got to meet for the very first time in person a uh, number of people like uh, Olivia Savannah from Olivia's Catastrophe and uh, Ben from Ben Reads Good and Jennifer Loves Books and Ross from Scally Dandeline uh, about the books and uh, Charlie and uh, Alice and Gemma who are currently doing the plot along um, for the, the Woman's Prize. So it was a really great uh, event and just so lovely to, to meet all these people and uh, they recommended to me um, some books which I'm going to talk about and show off here and talk about why I'm so interested in reading them. And there are some other books here as well that Publishers has kindly sent me. So I have a real interesting mixture of fiction and nonfiction and poetry. So I'll just dive into it. First, there's a really short novel that I've been meaning to get a copy of for ages. And so I was glad to finally have the opportunity to buy Orbital by Samantha Harvey, which follows a number of different astronauts as they uh, are on a craft circling around Earth and their observations of the planet and their interactions with each other and reflections on nature and space. And it just sounds like such a me kind of book. And I have read something by uh, Samantha Harvey before. Is it called Western Wind, um, which is just so beautifully written. And uh, so I bought this at Libraria Bookshop. Um, which they have a special thing where uh, they stamp the inside of your book and uh, they, they ask you if you, you want this done um, before actually doing it um, rather than just automatically defacing their book. And uh, here's a bookmark I got. And their bookshop is really unique in that they organize their books in categories but not in like traditional categories in like all different um all through all different subject matters and uh so you can just like wander around and i find it slightly challenging if i'm looking for a particular book but to, to actually locate it of course you can just ask the booksellers but uh but yeah it's it's just a really different interesting way of of book shopping by subject matter stone yard devotional by charlotte wood i thought this might make the the woman Prize for Fiction list, but it didn't. Um, this is an Australian uh, novel uh, about uh, a woman who is not religious, but who uh, is going through some difficulties in her life, and she leaves uh, everything about her life behind of her work and her relationships and her family to go live in a religious community, and it's about her time there. It's meant to be a very contemplative um, story. There are a number of, like, mysteries it, it follows as well, but I think it's, it's much more uh, kind of, like, thoughtful story, you know, rather than a plot-driven one. Martyr! Exclamation mark by Keva Akbar. A lot of people have been discussing this novel, and especially um, Sarah, um, who recommended it strongly to me and said that she highly expects it to see it be nominated for some awards this year. It's uh, a novel about a young orphaned man who's um, the, the son of Iranian immigrants. Uh, it's set between New York and Tehran as he goes on a journey to discover the story about his mother's life and the various um, mysteries um, surrounding it uh, and her death. Uh, Lauren Groff um, says of this author that Keva Akbar is a radiant soul, a poet so agile and lighthearted, it comes as no surprise that his first leap into fiction is elegant, dizzying, 
playful. Children of This Land by Serafina Crolla. Uh, this is about a family in the south of Italy, uh, the Valente family, and it follows them over a period of time of the people that remain in uh, this local town and those that emigrate to England. And I love a good family saga, especially one that begins with a family tree. And you can see here that there are a lot of members of this Italian family. Staying in Italy, one of my favorite novels that I read last year was Forbidden Notebook by Alba de Suspedes. It is such a good and involving story. I'm so multi-layered and it's just come out in the UK in paperback form. So I'd highly encourage anyone to read this, but there's also her brand new translated novel. I mean, this was first published years ago, but it's only just been translated into English called Her Side of the Story. And this edition comes with an afterword uh, by Elena Ferrante. And this is the story of an Italian woman in the 1930s who's um, raised uh, by sort of conservative parents and raised um, to, to marry a certain man, but she rebels against that. She wants to carve her own path out in the, the world. Um, she she meets a professor who she has a romantic relationship with and she tries to establish her own life for herself and it sounds so good uh, and quite epic and I can't wait to read this. A new collection of short stories is Ghost Pains by Jesse Jaswowska Stevens and this is about a number of young women in America um, who make disastrous uh, decisions uh, in their lives, uh, but it's also about ethics and trying to uh, reconcile a, a sense of history in the, the present time. So it's very much about modern uh, lives and a new generation. Another one of my favorite novels that I read last year was Mrs. S by Kay Patrick. And this is their first collection of poetry called Three Births, uh, which uh, is about a and the environment. Um, so it explores the landscapes and uh, interpersonal relationships and the changing of the seasons. Um, there's a number of different poems uh, about uh, different uh, seasons and I just love the way that they write. Then I have a couple of new nonfiction books. Uh, first there's a collection of coming out stories uh, called Countless Sleepless Nights uh, which is organized by Karina Magar and this is a uh, number of stories of of uh, people coming out um, from the comic to the more poignant to the unusual. And I think I'm going to find this uh, a very touching and moving collection. Then there is a book of untold recent history called Revolutionary Acts by Jason Akunde. And this is looking at the lives of black gay men in Britain in the 70s, 80s and 90s, where the author conducted a number of interviews with uh, a black gay men whose um, stories haven't really been told or like much like popularized in in culture or um, film or books um, previously and it looks at their their personal lives um, as well as their political and social lives and uh, yeah it just sounds so fascinating and it begins uh, with a little quote from Lady Windermere's fan uh, Oscar Wilde as, which says history is merely a gossip there's the new memoir, Grief is for People by Sloan Crosley, uh, which records the author's experiences living in New York City and um, the sense of community she found there and a new sense of family that she found with friends that she met, but how one of her closest uh, male friends um, eventually committed suicide and about the traumatic experience of that and, and the, the grief she experienced, uh, but also how uh, her apartment was broken into and uh, the sense of violation uh, in her life. So she writes about um, these experiences in a really moving sounding way. And uh, the author Tara Westover um, says this is heartbreaking and wholly original. And finally, there's the collection, again, I Hear These Waters, which is a group of songs and poetry that's newly translated from a number of people in the Maya community in the northeast of India. Uh, this is a, a group who are descended from Bengali Muslims, and their work isn't often heard um, outside uh, their region because um, it's in a language that's not officially recognized by the 
the country. Um, so a lot of it deals um, with their specific heritage and history, but also with universal subject matter. So these are all of the new books that I got recently. A lot of reading to get stuck into, and I'm looking forward to exploring all of these books. But I'd love to know uh, if you have read any of these titles, or if you're interested in reading any of them now, please let me know about that in the comments below. I hope you're doing well and are able to do some book shopping yourself or are able to visit your local library and that you're reading good things. And I will speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.